Hey everybody, welcome to dot to dot Today we're going to look at a couple of things, some of the new things they found on the Oak Island Show. Uh, the first we're going to look at is the lead seal, the bale seal that was found on the beach. And uh, here I've outlined uh, what I could see as what is written on it. And it's interesting. Uh, I believe this is the Greek letter gamma and this is epsilon has a cross and it has what we have here down here which would be uh, of somewhat masonic origin perhaps or maybe this is a v but it looks like a, a square and compass that you would see on a masonic and then you have the rope seal here and this is very telling. Uh, it took me just a few minutes, actually a few seconds, and I found this website here. Uh, this is about Jamestown and what they found on Jamestown. And here's a here's a, a lead seal that looks pretty close to what we have. There's a cross, and it looks like there's an epsilon here. Different style though, and uh, this doesn't look like uh, the Greek letter gamma. It looks like it might have been an H. But these uh, lead seals can tell us a lot of information. Uh, there's this uh, video down here, and I'll put this website on the in the description, a link in the description section. But uh, this lady is Catherine Davis. She's uh, I guess she was going for her PhD, but this is she might be a PhD now, and she basically just studies I think these lead seals and uh, she describes uh, how much information you can get off of them and it's quite a bit uh, so the Oak Island uh, archaeology is definitely making some uh, strides and headways uh, whether this seal is going to add any light onto uh, Oak Island mystery uh, we don't know uh, it definitely will most likely give us a region of origin and perhaps a time period. Uh, these James, Jamestown was uh, established in 1603 or 1609, early 1600s. So, you know, that will be pretty much uh, the time period where a lot of artifacts on Oak Island have been found. Uh, the other thing I want to talk about about also is go back to the uh, Robert Stevenson's letter that uh, was given uh, a couple of shows ago and you know we know these symbols are from La Formula but uh, one of the things that is not in La Formula is this north datum adjustment this line of, of symbols which uh, reads minus 21 uh, degrees was not in La Formula. So this addi additional information or this string of this pattern of information was not in La Formula. So where did he get it? We don't know. But it does give us, it is the cipher for La Formula. Uh, the other thing, 140, uh, heading from the altar, this is just 45. That's all that you get there is 45. This also is in the formula, but it's not heading from the altar. It is uh, an angle from uh, an angle that you're supposed to take uh, going 522 feet, which is the next uh, line in the Stevenson letter. This is 522 feet or 522. It doesn't even say feet. It just says 522. And you know it makes me wonder is the distance from the altar now is this something he knew or is it speculation? And I'm tending to lean towards its speculation that he is speculating what these symbols denote. Uh, the other one is too the baffling solar azimuth heading which is 145 and the second distance this was not in the formula 
the second distance, which is a uh, uh, thousand and sixty-five, that was in the formula, not with the same spelling, but it was in the formula of this number. And then I failed to mention this in my last video is the depth from the marker, and um, this is crucier, which is a French word for to dig, and this is forty and this is for uh, the decoded for feet and I had this so the thing I wanted everybody's asking where where's the altar well let me bring up Nolan's cross okay and we'll look at Nolan's cross and then I'm gonna overlay this now this is the temple, temple of Solomon and this is the first temple that was built on the Temple Mount in uh, Jerusalem in Israel and the dimensions of this are they're laid out in the Old Testament uh, I don't remember which book it is but they're laid out in the Old Testament and it gives you a somewhat a detailed uh, building plan for building the uh, temple but uh, this is one of the pictures that is on the internet available and if you notice that Nolan's cross pretty much is in line with the what I call the stations of the high priest so the high priest once a year on a holiday or a day called uh, Yom Kippur which I guess it would be a holiday, that the high priest would enter into the most holy place and make uh, uh, make uh, amends for the sins of the nation of Israel. And he would start here, I would imagine, at the burnt offering altar. So here's an altar right here, altar of burnt offerings, and it corresponds to the top stone. And then he would move to the laver, and this is a big basin, and there was actually ten portable basins that were pretty big, they held a lot of water, uh, that they would use to purify themselves. And then there, there used to be also a, a big permanent basin, which here was called the Brazen Sea, which they totally could immerse themselves in. But this was a wash station, a purification station. Then he would enter into the holy place and he would place the showbread on the table and light the lampstand and then he would go to the altar of incense and he would light the altar of incense and then after that he would move into the most holy place which is not part of Nolan's cross uh, but it is a location of the vault under the earth which is uh, taken from Zena Halpern's map and uh, I can get into this later but this the specific location of this has a lot to do with uh, the location of Nolan's cross but also triangle 2 mostly triangle 2 because uh, this is pretty much due south the vault is due south and triangle 2 is due north of the vault but that's another uh, topic. Uh, so that's pretty much what I wanted to show you guys. Uh, this, these new evidences that are coming up with Oak Island uh, are pretty much in line with uh, Masonic thinking, which basically, I guess you could say, was the mystical side of the Knights Templar. Um, it also... You know, we also had seen before that uh, this Nolan's cross also conforms to uh, the Tree of Life, which is a Jewish uh, mystic belief uh, that is basically the centerpiece of what they call Kabbalah, and it 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 it, cr it crosses over in many different belief systems, especially today. But uh, if you extended no, uh, the crossbar of Nolan's cross out and the mid pointer stone, it, it hits all these spaces here. 
and uh, it doesn't hit them all, but it's something that we can pretty much say that it possibly could be, you know, the designer of Nolan's Cross, which, by the way, is very, very um, geometrically situated in that it, it its dimensions are very precise in in what it does and uh, I can get into a little bit of this is the from the center of this to here is 360 feet as the same as this is to here and it is pretty much a 90 degree angle uh, this dimension here, the yellow one, um, in some of the websites on the internet, it says it's 429 feet. I believe it's 430 feet. Um, and then this blue is 290 feet, which by the way is twice from the headstone to the top stone, which is 145 feet. And some of the uh, websites say it's 293 feet. But uh, I wanted to show you, we have a theory on our team that there is two scales. Uh, one of them is a distance of 1440, and the other is a distance of 2130. And these uh, distances are in proportion, in a ratio, to these distances on Nolan's Cross. And I did a little work up on this, and I'll show you guys. Um, it's right here. And if we look at Nolan's Cross, and the yellow is the 430, and the blue is 290, if you correspond those, okay, the larger one, to the scale that we found, which is 2,130, and divide it by the, uh, the scale, the other scale, which corresponds to the 290, it's 1,440. When you take that, uh, that ratio, or the dimension, it comes out to these numbers. And the difference is only four thousandths of a difference. So you could say that two not, uh, 430 is, uh, or is 1.4, or 290 is 1.483 of 430. So this could be con uh, considered a measurement and that this is the deviation that these two have to one another. If you also take uh, the counterparts and put them together and make a ratio uh, the 290 over the 440 and the 430 over the 2130 uh, you get this number these numbers which basically give you a ratio with a difference of five ten thousandths it's pretty darn close and since these numbers uh, the 1440 was taken off of the Rochefoucauld map. This is uh, basically 1347. And that was a number that was written on the Rochefoucauld map. And the 2130 is uh, 1986 was the distance that was written at the footnote of La Formula and these are converted in today's uh, unit measures because the 14, <clears throat> 1347 and 1986 were measurements uh, given in pre-1668 uh, measurements. So that is what is in Nolan's Cross. Also, when you go 290, 290 plus 430, it comes out to 720, which makes this a square. And uh, when you take uh, 720 
and you double it and that is one of the reasons why the mid pointer stone is there is because uh, the mid pointer stone is a distance that you uh, take and you invert there's the mid pointer stone that's that and then you do the same thing on the other side and you extend uh, that out to the extended triangle point right here and that is a point where one of the circles or one of the distances come off of and uh, that's in my previous videos and then when you extend it out to the full 1440 feet uh, from the end stone to 1440 feet it reaches what is called the north anchor of what we call the north anchor so these are things that are in the Stevenson record uh, however I don't think that they are uh, properly labeled another thing too is the 45 522 is uh, an angle which comes off of uh, it goes through the triangle of Peter which is also on Zine Halpern's map the oak entrance and it ends up at the top stone which according to the layout on Solomon's temple could be considered the altar so uh, the distance from the altar that he says in Stevenson's record is doesn't match and uh, the 45 degree angle doesn't match but the everything here is related to true north and I believe the true north uh, the minus 21 is an indication that he may have had some in information about uh, the what we would call the magnetic declination of uh, true north. In other words, you had to subtract 21 degrees from a magnetic compass heading in order to get true north. And if that is true, then that would be able to tell you about the time in which this was designed because uh, magnetic declination varies throughout the year in a cycle and I showed that in my last video anyway that's what I have for you guys today and here's the two circles these are the two main circles that I believe uh, sh pretty much give you the oak, uh, the oak entrance, the north anchor, and the hole, which are the three main components, I believe, in um, figuring out this mystery and finding whatever it is on Oak Island. Anyway, that's what I have for you guys today. Be safe. Thank you for watching.